so dr prashant thank you for the presentation it's very good one i have few doubts yes yes sir please yeah. see uh, the lca method whatever you have said is is there any standard on that yeah so there are some iso standards which are a part of environmental management system um, there, there are some numbers which are given i can send it across to you so that that is basically a guide book to uh, get into the uh, life cycle assessment of any product that you want to make or or let's say you are manufacturing in particular right uh, secondly this uh, recycling whatever we are, we are whatever you have said uh, considering that recycling whether that is considered directly as a, a sustainable sustainability or not uh see there are different schools of thought on this but uh, i guess we'll get more answers to this when you look at the third lecture which is the end lecture of today and uh, probably after that we can have a more better discussion on this because yeah. a lot of things will get clear because see uh, it, it basically is what i believe as as a science and uh, what others believe as a science as well uh, because sustainability has a lot of things in particular and when we are talking about different uh, using different things for recycling in particular it may look sustainable it may not look, not look sustainable so someone may think that uh, bio based materials are more sustainable but then there is a different school of thought saying why bio based are less sustainable than recyclable plastics as well so more discussions on it going forward yeah how about this uh, measurement of uh, carbon emission uh, okay how, to, how, how are you measuring that so there are some standards which are given standard materials which are given and uh, what is going to be measured is uh what is how is is it going to be measured is let's say we are saying that uh, for generation of electricity we are using let's say some x amount of coal for generation of that amount of electricity so what is the environmental burden of the amount of coal being burned to generate electricity same way when we are talking about transportation we burn a x amount of fuel so that x amount of petrol or diesel how much uh, you know from crude right uh, extraction of crude to generation of fuel uh, how much is basically the burden of the environment of that fuel on the environment so you have to certainly go back tracking in particular so ideally not just uh, our polymer or yeah, plastic alone contributes for this carbon footprint no 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 everything i just gave you an example so uh, there is a very famous brand i don't remember the name but they have come up with the sneakers basically which are uh, the shoes and uh, if you look at the the the, the marker that they have uh, it's a basic a strip uh, that they have just below the Uh, the 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 foot of the shoe just above that they will be writing that uh, our sneaker has been uh, you know sort of uh, made with uh, this much amount of water this much amount of electricity and in total they will be giving out a total uh, you know global warming potential on that so these are some gimmicks which uh, newer brands are uh, sort of coming up with and you would find more and more people are going to come up because even if biodegradable plastics are used or not but then sustainability comes into everything that we use in today's world so not just for plastics it's even for steel and that is where plastics are actually better than steel if you look at it in that sense okay and carbon footprint you are taking across all the i mean complete whole life cycle of it yes 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 right. yeah thank you Uh, myself pankaj gore yes uh, i want to know that this bio remedy uh, mediation so which microorganisms are there that they are uh, the general microorganisms which found in the environment or there are some specific microorganisms developed for this yeah so bio remediation you will find some of the methods that are used in bio remediation specifically use some genetic uh, genetically uh, designed enzy enzymes in particular but then with research it has been found that naturally occurring microorganisms also have a favorability to specific environmental pollutants and with this selective measurement they can be selected for uh, let's say x environmental pollutant so they are a mix of both which are genetically engineered and which are present in the environment as well if provided they show the you know or they exhibit a selective degradation of that particular environment uh, pollutant environmental pollutant Mm -hmm. okay and this uh, compostable uh, which is uh, you says that it it uh, happens in 180 days it is already proven oh yes sir am, if you go to even a cpcb website central mm -hmm. pollution control board and if you just go and look, have a look 
you would find uh, there are so many people in india who have already certified and they have been selling their products uh, for for quite a long time now so the, all these material that we have seen uh, they have been blended in some proprietary formulation form and major more or less this is what uh, people are selling at least in our country in particular thank you uh, one sir, last question what, please yeah, yes sir, what would be please. the cost yeah what would be the cost of uh, bioplastics as compared to the virgin plastics is it cost effective no it's not cost effective but sir the advantage that you generally get with bioplastics is let's say if you are using conventional polymers if i still want to make a film from polyethylene i'd have to go to 120 microns right now uh, when we look at let's say gsm of that film it goes up okay so anyways if i am using a bioplastic material let's say uh, 300 rupees kg material versus conventional plastic somewhere around 100 and 100 to 110 i can still work at 20 25 microns if i am making it with bioplastics so that is where i get the cost advantage that uh the same film if i am able to engineer it i am converting it into 20 microns which means if it is a 120 micron film i am at least six times lower in terms of gsm so that is where the cost competitiveness can be there and that is the only way the government is actually promoting bioplastics in our country otherwise it would really be difficult for anyone to survive selling bioplastics because consumers may not be ready to pay that yeah. amount it becomes heavy on the industry then in that case so is this uh, like commercial production uh, in good quantity available in india for exports uh, people are developing yes in commercial quantities and they are exporting out of the country as well uh, but i would uh, i would not say in good quantity uh, precisely the reason is uh, if if we go back to the statistics that we saw i did not come to how much bioplastic is produced across the globe so if you look yes. at uh, the 2019 statistics which was around 3 29 million metric ton Per per month per year that year, so you compare it with bioplastic, it is just two point five million metric ton. That is not even point five percent of the total plastic that we consume across the globe. So it's okay. still very very niche in particular, and that the limiting factors are technology, the limiting factors are cost, and then slowly and gradually it may come up. But still we are looking at a very very long thought in particular. You will have to require uh, some some sort of disruptive innovation in this area. in particular for the industry to accept it readily very easily okay and and uh, as far as india is concerned the production quantity would be even less uh, very less of course very less as far as i know i i don't remember anyone who is making bio based polymers in india oh okay so it all everything is imported as far as i know okay fine